Hi, and thanks for tuning into this video. I'm Molly, and today I'm joined by Ryan Shelton, and we're going to be showing you the Fourier 4, a house of worship installation system. So first, we're going to show you what the product is, and then go through some of its key features and how the, you can utilize these in your house of worship. So first, over to Ryan to get us started off. Thanks, Molly. So I think the first question we have to ask is what exactly is the Fourier 4? The Fourier 4 is essentially a mixer in a box. In this box, we refer to as the processing engine, and it's where all of the processing happens. It's the brain of the system. This engine is capable of 128 full processing input channels and 56 buses. When we say full processing, this means EQ, filters, dynamics, delay, and effects. All of the buses then have a four band parametric EQ, a 28 band graphic EQ, delay, dynamics, and effects. These input channels and buses can be divided into four different areas, hence calling it the Fourier 4, each area having its own dedicated stereo output bus. Typically, these areas would be set up as different physical rooms. In a house of worship scenario, this could be your main chapel, foyer, nursery or cry room, and maybe another multi-purpose room altogether. All of these rooms can work independently of each other or together as one big system. This means you've got the equivalent of four mixers in one compact unit. And this is just scratching the surface of all of the power and features in the Fourier 4 processing engine. But we can take a more in-depth look at all the possibilities in a future video. It's all very well having this power in the engine, but how do we control it? The engine can be controlled by the Fourier 4 controller app, which is available for both Windows and Mac. The Fourier 4 iPad app, or for a simpler solution, it can be controlled by our customizable hardware controller devices. There are three of these to choose from, and you can mix and match to suit the needs of your venue. The A-Control 1 is a very simple controller with one LCD screen and a dual function encoder, which has one function when you turn the encoder and another when you press and turn it. These two functions are fully assignable by the user, so it could be a volume and a pan, or more likely a source selector, which we'll come back to later on in this video. The A-Control 1 is available in both UK, EU and US sizes. Next up, we have the A-Control 6. The A-Control 6 has six LCDs, each with their own dual function encoder and two buttons. The unit also has six additional buttons across the bottom. Like the A-Control 1, all of the buttons and encoders on the A-Control 6 are fully assignable. An example use of an A-Control 6 could be as a personal monitoring unit for a musician. Encoders can be set to control level, so send levels to their mix bus, with mutes and solos, and buttons across the bottom could be assigned to control layers and banks if you've got more than six channels, or they could be used to control other features like firing GPOs or MIDI messages, or controlling effects. To finish off the list of available controllers, we have the A-Control 8. The A-Control 8 has eight channel-like strips, each with an LCD to show channel name and metering, two buttons, maybe a solo and a mute, plus a 100 millimeter fader as seen on our consoles. There are also six buttons down the side that could be set to control banks, firing snapshots, GPO MIDI, tap tempo, or a host of other controls. You could use an A-Control 8 as a replacement for a front of house console surface in smaller venues or for simply adding physical control where you may not have had it before. This not only saves space, but is a much less daunting interface for people who are not professional sound engineers. All of these controllers connect to the engine via a Cat5e or Cat6 cable. When it comes to power, all of these controllers can run off power over ethernet, or PoE for short, which means only one cable run per controller. For added security, or if you're not using a PoE compatible switch, the A-Control 6 and A-Control 8 can also be powered by an external power supply. We've got control now, but how do we get audio in and out of the processing engine? 
On the back of the Foria 4 processing engine, there are four Digico multi-channel interface cards, or DMI cards for short. These DMI cards allow for inputs and outputs across a wide range of audio formats. These formats include Dante, MADI, AES, OptiCore, and more. You can choose exactly the cards you need and use them in any combination. And if your needs change over time, simply add or swap out cards. There are also three SDIO card slots. These accommodate Digico's standard SD Rack IO cards, including the AESIO, microphone preamplifier cards, analog output cards, and even Digico's 32 bit mic preamps and 32 bit analog output cards, which provide premium audio quality with the lowest noise currently possible. You can mix and match your cards and use these cards for direct connection for wire to wireless microphone inputs or outputs to feed the PA and any other areas that need audio. You'll probably need additional remote I.O. stage boxes, and there are plenty of options. Developed specifically for the 4 4 we have the A168 stage and A164 wall boxes. These come in two versions. The standard version uses the A3232 protocol, a Digico audio format that allows for 32 channels of audio bidirectionally down a single CAF IV cable. We also offer the A168D and the A164D, which are Dante versions of the same stage boxes. Whichever version you choose to suit your needs, they are floor, rack, or wall mountable. The A164 also has an LCD scribble strip, which means that you can immediately see what mics you need to plug in where. If you need more I.O., then the 4 4 can also be connected to any of our larger Digico racks. The modular SD rack and SD mini racks, the D2 rack or the D rack. Now that you have an understanding of what the 4 4 is, let's take a look at some of its key features and why these make it perfect for a house of worship install. For those of you who haven't heard of Digico, we came from the touring and live events markets. Digico's main focus has always been audio quality, and we have brought this to some of the biggest and best sounding gigs of all time. This audio quality is just as important in our install products, and the Foria 4 is no exception. Most AV install manufacturers come from a networking background and don't have the level of expertise to build products that match our high level of audio quality. All elements of the system, the controllers, external I.O. and the engine itself are mountable in a number of ways, whether it's wall, table, rack or floor mountable. This means that you can easily install the Fourier 4 system into any venue. Furthermore, when you connect each element of the system, it will automatically update the firmware to match the processing engine. This makes setup super easy and means that you don't have to worry about updating the peripherals manually. They just work. Almost every parameter in the software can be saved and changed by our snapshot system. Snapshots can be used like presets. You can have multiple snapshots saved in your system and fire them as needed for the different worship surfaces you're holding. You can assign any soft key on the engine or on one of the controllers to fire different snapshots for different service types. This means that you can completely change the layout of the engine with the press of a button. This is essential for systems which are likely to be run by volunteers who may have little to no experience with audio systems or by facility directors that need to quickly recall a different configuration. Snapshots can be either set to control all areas or be limited to just a specific area. For example, you could have a controller in a breakout room fire a snapshot to repurpose the breakout room without affecting the audio in the main room. Once the system is set up, controllers assigned and snapshots created, the controller software used to configure the system can be removed. The engine can then be controlled just by your A controllers and any external triggers you've set up. These might be MIDI, GPI, AMX, or Crestron. The software has a lot of control that you may not necessarily need for your venue on a day-to-day -day basis. Removing it and controlling the 4 4 via your customized physical controllers will make the daily running of the system easy and simple for all. The 4 4 processing engine also gives you the ability to upload audio files directly onto the engine. 
You can then assign buttons, again, either on the engine itself or via any of your controllers, to trigger the playback of these audio files. Maybe you have background music, announcements, or sound files that you often use and would otherwise need to connect your phone or laptop to play this audio. As mentioned earlier, one of the functions that you can assign to control your A Control 1 is a source selector. This means you could add an A Control 1 to any breakout room and easily switch the source of the audio in that room. For example, you could have one in the foyer playing music. When the service starts, you can change the source in the foyer so that you can listen to the service. This will also give you a volume control of the audio in the foyer. The Foyer 4 has a built-in 64-channel automatic microphone mixer, or AMM for short. The AMM takes multiple inputs of speech and automatically turns up a channel when a speaker is talking and turns it down when they stop. This is perfect for interactive congregational discussions and situations where multiple people need to be talking at the same time, as it prevents feedback normally associated with having lots of open microphones. With the AMM, you don't need an engineer to mix the sound for this, and you could even set up one of your snapshots as a multi-microphone setup that takes care of this mixing for you. For extra flexibility within your worship setup, you can also configure the AMM to work as two independent AMMs with 32 channels in each. Perfect for when different rooms are hosting separate services. The 4U4 is also capable of firing and receiving GPIO, general purpose input and output, and MIDI messages. Here are some examples of what you could use these for. A GPO could trigger bringing a projector down or turning on TVs, displays, or other scenic elements. This could be a single button to manually trigger, or you could configure it to trigger automatically with a recall of a snapshot. GPOs and MIDI can also integrate other DSP and audio control systems you may already have in your church. A simple GPI foot switch could be used for the pastor to control his own audio, letting him turn on or off reverb on his voice when he's going to sing, turn on or off his IEMs, or simply have a cough switch. Contact closures and partition walls could automatically fire a snapshot when the physical configuration of the multipurpose room is changed. Or a GPO could be used to dim the lights for the congregation at the start of a service. The 4 4 system provides plenty of potential for future expansion. Should the needs of the system change over time, there is plenty of room for expansion, whether this is adding extra I.O. boxes, adding additional controllers, or adding a Digico console. The four DMI slots and three SD card slots mean that should you get an external piece of equipment that you want to connect, there is a range of different audio protocols available. AES for digital connections, MADI, maybe to record a multi-track of a service with a DigiGrid MGB interface, or Dante for facility-wide audio distribution and returns. This modular design allows uh, us to accommodate any future audio formats through new DMI or IO cards that we may release in the future. So we've seen what the Fourier 4 is, how to control it, how to get audio in and out, and some key features that make it perfect for a house of worship. Now, let's look at a real example of how this can be used in a real house of worship. Ryan's church have very kindly let us use the floor plans of their building for this video. So I'll show you how the Fourier 4 could be utilized in a venue like this. This house of worship has one main worship space, the Hudson Hall, a small lobby area, a cafe, and some additional office type rooms around the building. At the heart of the audio system is the Fourier 4. This will do all of the processing for the system. The main hall, area one, is used for simple services with just a pastor, as well as more complex services with musicians, multiple speakers, and microphones being moved around the congregation. For this, we've added an A Control 8. Depending on the service type, the engineer can press one of the macros down the side of the unit to do all of the routing and setup for them. Faders can then be used to control the level of the pastor's microphone and the level of the musician's instruments. On the stage are two A164 wall LCD boxes to connect microphones to. 
Their LCD scribble strips make them obvious where microphones need plugging in, so anyone could do it. During multiple speaker and interactive congregational services, the Fourier 4's inbuilt AMM is used to prevent feedback and make the engineer's life much easier. When selecting a service type, the Fourier 4 can also fire GPO signals to dim or brighten the lights. Furthermore, time announcements can be triggered from the controller to inform the audience in the lobby that the service is about to begin. The Connection Cafe, Area 2, doesn't hold services, but occasionally has small musical worship acts, so an acoustic guitar and a couple of singers. In here is an A16-8, which can be packed away out of sight when no musicians are set to perform. There is also an A control 6 to control the level of the microphones through the cafe's PA system. In the lobby, area 3, is an A control 1. This makes it possible to listen to the service from outside the main venue. The A control 1 is set up as a source selector, so it could play generic background music, audio from the main hall, or the audio from the cafe when musicians are performing in there. So there we have a ex simple example of how the Fourier 4 could be used in a small house of worship. Hopefully this has inspired you into thinking about how you could use the Fourier 4 in your small house of worship. Thanks for watching. We hope you're excited about all of the possibilities of the Fourier 4 audio processing engine. And keep your eyes peeled for future videos where we will go into applications for larger houses of worship, as well as in-depth guides on how to configure your Fourier 4 system.